Oh my gosh, we're doing the thing. Okay. Let's see if I can make this happen. Uh, switch to game. Uh, where the hell is that? Desktop audio. Yeah, it's doing the thing. Alright, sweet. Yeah, I want to view like stats and shit. Cool. Stream quality is good. Oh, hey, Aiden. How are things? I'm impressed that you, uh, found out that, uh, I was attempting a stream. finally Friday and I don't have to get up for work in the morning, so I decided to try and play some games and also see if I can figure out how streaming software works, because I just think it's fun, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to move my webcam or something. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Glad you stopped in. I don't know if uh, your dad mentioned to you, but there was at one point before the pandemic started uh, the hope that I would be able to come out and spend Christmas with all of you. Um, I'll be honest, things are looking like that's probably not going to be the smart choice come December. But if things end up clearing up, then I would love to come hang out. We'll see what ends up making sense, but yeah. At the very least, um, you should at some point in the next couple of months uh, send me a list of what you're interested in for Christmas. So I can get you all that cool shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah. See, what have I been up to? Uh, I got a new job at a different company. Um, I don't remember what I was doing. Uh, let's see, what was I doing last Christmas? I think I was working for Visible as uh, tech support slash junior developer is what I called it. Um, I'm now working for a different company called Finicity that you will not have heard of. They do background stuff for uh, like personal finance apps, mortgage apps, all that kind of stuff. We handle all the APIs that let those companies send data back and forth securely. Um, anyway, I'm on the support team there, um, which is, that's been a nice improvement because I get to work from home instead of going to a packed warehouse full of lots of people in the middle of a pandemic, so. Oh, hell yeah! Three AP classes, 11th grade. That's awesome. You and Connor are getting so old. I'm sure literally everyone in your life tells you that. Um, 
but that is the perception that we have. When I picture you two, I still think of you as middle schoolers at the oldest. Uh, so for you two to be almost done with high school is insane to me. <laughs> but that's awesome. I knew you two were wicked smart, so I'm not at all surprised that you're taking some AP classes, but that's really cool. so I could actually edit things. Silly, silly play. Alright. Oh god, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, I want that. That. Okay. Holy cow, four or five inches off of your dad. That's awesome. We'll have to compare heights the next time we see each other. I always keep thinking in the back of my head, like one of my life goals is to finally be taller than him. I've always been like getting closer and closer every year. Uh, and I swear, I am still growing, if just a little bit, every year, so I really hope that I'll get there eventually. I might not, because genetics, but heck, if I end up taller than him, that'd be pretty freaking cool. <laughs> Well, say hi to everyone. Give your family lots of hugs from me. And as we find out more about pandemic stuff towards Christmas, then uh, we'll figure out some options for potentially trying to get together or maybe doing a remote call or something, opening each other's presents. But yeah. Oh, you got three cats chilling in your room? Hell yeah, that's awesome. I've still just got the one cat. Uh, and she... I don't know if something has changed or if just me being at home I've noticed it more. She is so loud. Like, anytime she walks into the room she has to announce her presence. And even after I've acknowledged her, then... She will uh, still just meow repeatedly while make while maintaining eye contact. I don't know if she's like a certain dominance or what, but <laughs> freaking cats! But they're so adorable. Cats are the cutest. <laughs> Please pretend to play the game. Ow. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean about meowing in the morning before it's time. Luckily, my cat doesn't bother me in the morning so much, uh, but when I have done cat sitting for other people, um, they loved to uh, just try and wake me up at like five when the earliest that they would actually get fed is seven. Just because I'm sure their thought process is the sooner I get the human up, the sooner they'll feed me. And I want food now, so. Yeah. 
Oh, cool, yeah. I knew that um, I had seen her account playing this game, but I wasn't 100% certain whether it was uh, her or one of you sharing her account, so that's cool. Fires are gonna give me anything, huh? die CSGO Doom Eternal yeah I still need to play Eternal I uh, have played through probably half of the I was about to say original Doom but the uh, new Doom which was tons of fun you beat Eternal 15 times holy cow that's awesome There aren't many games that I can say that I've played that many times. I think for me the closest would be Dishonored. 2016 sounds right. I think you're right about uh, that being the one. I think it's probably one of those things where uh, I played through part of the game and then just switched to doing something else, and then never bothered to switch back to finish it. I still need to go do that. Most recently, I've been trained. I've been playing uh, Control, which came out a little while ago, uh, but I just recently got it because it finally came out on Steam, whereas it was on the Epic Game Store exclusive for a long time. And that's been a pretty fun game slightly on the spooky side, which I'm personally not a huge fan of, but the gameplay is a ton of fun. Kind of an interesting story, and it's a really pretty game. It's one of the few games uh, that supports RTX graphics, uh, and even without that enabled, it really benefits from just being super well designed, beautiful lighting, all that kind of stuff. As it's a ghost in the attic. Interesting. Weirdly, my favorite part of The Binding of Isaac is those weird little nightmares that he has in between the levels. Those, I think, are the most entertaining part. Oh man, I ran right into that. Nice. Yeah, most of playing games with friends. That's awesome. For me personally, I have found that I'm playing mostly single player games, and that's just because uh, since I'm working from home, I can sometimes sneak like half an hour worth of gaming in between meetings or other things uh, at work. And if I do a multiplayer game, then I'm usually committing to something a little longer than that, so... I think probably the big one for me recently has just been uh, CSGO. Because those games are pretty quick, and I do like that uh, competitive first-person shooter kind of vibe. Uh, okay. Pretty sure this is Gemini. 
I can definitely see how that's the kind of thing that you would like, especially given that those things lend themselves well to being able to like, take your time, go over fine detail, and uh, have a very methodical process for things. there's still plenty of room for creativity, innovation, and still a good amount of uh, math and engineering skills required. So, yeah, that's really cool. Why did he eat the freaking razor blade? Isaac, you're so dumb. Don't do these things. AP Calculus, AP Physics, AP Computer Science Principles. Interesting. Okay. So it seems like they have changed up the courses slightly since I took them. Um, when I took it, there was only one computer science class, and it was uh, just called Computer Science. Um, and then with pre-AP Calculus, is that... So it used to be called, there was Calculus AB, and then Calculus BC, which is roughly equivalent to Calculus 1 and Calculus 2, um, from a university class perspective. So I assume pre-AP Calculus is just the new name for Calculus 1. That would be my guess. Oh, of course I got hit. Four classes of computer things. That is awesome. I really wish that I had had uh, competent computer science teachers when I was in high school. Um, I had one teacher who was actually kind of good at computer science. Uh, but he retired when I was in, I think, ninth grade. Uh, and then I had an array of various other teachers who had a vaguely computery background that had to teach stuff. And then in my senior year, um, we, no joke, had eight different substitute teachers throughout the course of the year. 
um, because the teacher who was supposed to teach it was out on maternity leave, so then they brought in substitutes the entire time, and they each were gonna stay the whole time and then left after, like, two weeks. Uh, so I very much taught myself <laughs> uh, with what computer science knowledge I have, uh, which is both good and bad. I think computer science is one of those things where you're mostly just googling things and figuring it on, out on your own anyway, but at the same time having a good teacher who you can actually ask questions to help you get in the right mindset I think would have been really helpful. So given the fact that there are four different versions of computer science stuff, that makes me hopeful that you have competent teachers, so that's awesome. Uh, just pre-calculus A followed by pre-calculus B. Okay. Oh, okay. That might be pre-calc then. Hmm, interesting. That's cool. of a trope, but I also think it's true that younger people have an easier time picking up new things, particularly technology-related things. I think the technology piece of it is just simply that we have been exposed to it for more of our life, um, and people tend to generally have the attitude of once you feel like you know how most things work, um, you tend to not focus on learning new stuff as much as you probably should, and then when something new comes along you have a hard time picking that up. But all of that to say, it's really cool that you can pick up new things that quickly. Especially for, like, 3D modeling tools and softwares and stuff like that. My, uh, boyfriend is taking, uh, game-making classes at, uh, the U of U, and he has had to learn a few different types of software in order to, uh, few different types of software for his classes, depending on what the professor likes using. I can't remember the name of one of them, because I hadn't heard of it before, but I know that he has used Maya in the past, which, by the way, you should be able to get, like, a free student license of that or something. I vaguely remember doing that in the past. Hopefully that's still a thing that's available. Um, and then the other one was Unity. Um... For game making in particular, uh, generally either Unity or the Unreal Engine is what people will use. And luckily that's actually reflected in the classes that you take. Sometimes classes are really good about having you use things that you will use in the real world, quote unquote. Sometimes they're somewhat outdated. I think that's one instance where uh, it's hard to go too far wrong. I think 
Okay. Went to the treasure room this level. Let's go see if we can find it. This is the shop. Um, what's you? Double charge, okay. Sweet. Huh? Even house designs. That's really cool. I'm probably going to be moving out in the next year or so once uh, my boyfriend and I both finish up our last semester. Um, we're gonna probably get a place together somewhere and finally be free of our parents. <laughs> um, so I have just been looking wistfully at various uh, house designs and floor plans, uh, just kind of imagining uh, what my ideal house might be, even though I'm not gonna be moving into that ideal house immediately. There's still something kind of nice about uh, just picturing that. Ah. Nice pipe dream, I suppose. The one thing that I personally have always felt like I struggled with is uh, creating something completely from nothing. Um, like, if I have vague direction or an outline uh, then I generally don't have much trouble in completing something and then personalizing it to what I want. Um, but if it feels like I've got a blank piece of paper, I'm supposed to create a whole thing on that, then I don't know where to start. Um, So I guess for that reason, uh, the idea of having to design an entire house would, to me, be uh, really intimidating. So I think it's really awesome that you've already done some of that. that one. Ooh, yeah. Give me that treasure room. Uh, piercing shot, right? And speed, okay. Yeah, that's fair. You've got a little longer than I do uh, before you're probably going to be ready to move out. Plus, honestly, as long as you get along with your parents and they're willing to let you stay at home, um, then I honestly see no problem in continuing to do so until you're confident uh, and feel like you're ready to move out. I don't think there's any reason to feel rushed about that. Particularly since, you know, the world's going to shit, the economy is worse than it has been for a while, and uh, we get two recessions in a single generation. Is that fun? Ha ha! Uh, we'll stick with this guy so I can... Wait, am I on the depths? Okay, good. Depths 2 will be next, so I can still use this card and go right to the next trophy room. Ow. 
Now the hard part's done. He's on the ground. Okay. Now I've never gotten the uh, meat boy to a higher level than this, but I know that if I get another cube of meat, he uh, starts walking around on his own, which would be awesome. Alright, let's just immediately go here. I don't know what it is, but, uh, okay. I never really use the Ares one, because I just don't like the idea of running into enemies. I don't want to take damage intentionally if I don't have to. Man, the penetrating shot makes it so easy on those guys. Because I can hit them both at once. Come on, ghosty. Come back so I can kill you. Thank you. Uh, this first. Ooh, nice. First DLC for Doom Eternal. That'll be awesome. So is it going to be uh, just more levels, or are they adding, like, extra guns, uh, other, like, content uh, that you'll be playing with? It feels so rare these days that game developers will actually like invest in a game after it's come out. So it's awesome to hear that they're putting a lot of work into continuing to make that game shine. can uh, overmilk things for sure. It's a problem. <laughs> yeah. Freaking GTA Online. Or, you know, just the fact that GTA 5 has been out for multiple generations of consoles. And they're still just milking the exact same game. No new story content. Just... Here's a bunch of online stuff you can do, because that's where the microtransactions are. And that's all they care about. They've unfortunately found a method that makes them money, and they don't care to look beyond that. Which is part of what uh, makes me so excited about Cyberpunk 2077 because CD Projekt Red, at least, has a very clear 
we're not having microtransactions in the main game, DLC will be free, that kind of stuff. Uh, this, I think, gives me eternal life, yeah. You can go ahead and use that. We converted both, sweet. Yeah, Assassin's Creed is definitely another one. I personally really enjoyed 4, uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. That was a really fun game. And I've played a couple of the more recent ones. And they're fine, but I honestly didn't even finish them. In fact, the only reason that uh, I played... Let's see, which one was it? It was number six, Odyssey, the kind of Greek set one. Um, I played through that one and just kept going simply because uh, I found a bunch of mods to make everyone naked. And that made the game just interesting enough for me that I was willing to keep playing it. <laughs> ah, I hate Retrovision. It's not that bad, but it's just annoying. Yeah, I knew you were gonna stomp the hands. Come on, pop up, you jerk. Come on. There. Oh yeah, lots of damage up. I like this one. Okay, I think I'm ready to go. Yep. Ah, Mama Gertie. Let's just hope I don't happen to be standing on spikes. Ooh, didn't need to dodge that. Ow. Alright, that, the spikies. Speed up, yay. Let's go grab that battery I saw. Oh, so Elder Scrolls 6 is going to have co op? Hmm. I guess I can't say I'm surprised given that I know uh, the Elder Scrolls Online has had a fair amount of success for them. I personally haven't played it because generally if I'm going to play an RPG like that, I just want to play single player. I don't really care to have the MMO aspect to it. Um, but direct co-op actually sounds like a lot of fun. Because then you can pick a person who put, whose playstyle matches your own and then you have fun as a pair doing whatever. So that's pretty cool. Plus, in multiplayer Skyrim, you can, uh... Oh, okay. So there's a mod for Skyrim. Nice. It's hilariously buggy. I'm not surprised. Regular Skyrim is pretty buggy as it is. Sometimes if you're just standing in the wrong place, an NPC will, like, walk the five feet that they have to to actually trigger stuff. So yeah, I think especially if you try and generate like two player characters and have it recognize all of that simultaneously, that would suck. <laughs> oh hey, I had basically this exact same room already. <laughs> I hate the eyes. 
so much. Oh hey, I found the box. What is it? Um, ooh, if I go unlock one more room, I'll be able to get some hearts. Let's go do that. I don't care about that. Oh, interesting. Hmm. So they are double NPCs with double the health. I kind of get what you're saying, though, because uh, if they have to deal with two-player characters at once, you could theoretically just gang up on people and make every encounter super-duper easy. That bottom brain guy didn't hit me there. simultaneously. That makes sense. I kind of agree with what uh, you said about it being super easy, though. I found that almost every encounter can be really easily beaten if you just take advantage of the NPCs being dumb like they are. And there are tons of exploits that people have found for ways to have super high damage. I personally don't use those, I just go Stealth Archer, because I like Stealth Archer. Um, but uh, like with Assassin's Creed, actually, I recently played through Skyrim Special Edition um, with a ton of mods to make everyone naked, because it's just fun that way. I like killing someone and then looting them and then seeing their dead naked body. It's cool. And yeah, I played through that whole game basically just exploiting stealth mechanics. And that was tons of fun, I thought. I also forgot just how annoying it is to be a vampire in that game. Like, I became a vampire because I thought it would be super cool, and then I uh, walked outside afterwards and it was immediately like, nope, this sucks too much, I don't want to have to do everything exclusively at night because it's Skyrim. Why am I actually sleeping in beds and stuff and paying attention to what time of day it is? I just run around and if I happen to get back to town at 3 a.m., then yeah, I guess I'll wait until 8 so the stupid merchant's awake. <laughs> so I uh, ended up loading a save from a little while earlier and then said no to the uh, vampire option.
Yeah, I did the uh, Dawn Guard DLC. Um, I think for me it was simply just that I didn't want to deal with uh, avoiding direct sunlight. So I opted to just go back to being normal me. But the storyline for that is really cool. In the past I've played through both sides of becoming a vampire lord and then also going through the process to kill all of them and uh, restore the dawn guard. Alright. Me with an eye patch versus me! Angel phase. Because the angel phase is easy. I just shoot him a bit, and he goes away, and he comes back. He's talking to you, see, don't go back to house. Selling items. Nice. Damn. All right. Oh, I assume that's his dick falling off. Of tears. I don't want random bombs. I'll take Sister Maggie. I'm going to attack for Oh no, I don't want to be big. Dang it. Why did I take that though? Hundreds <laughs> of thousands of coins. That's fucking awesome. So many babies. Oh my god. I hate how when they're splitting, it like moves closer to you. I've been hit by that so many times in the past. Your friend, you jerk. Uh, I have not played Cuphead. Uh, I have watched a playthrough of it, 
because I know it's the kind of thing where uh, I would get frustrated and then just throw the game down and never pick it up again. Uh, but the art style is so gorgeous and the music is amazing. Uh, I know Connor's a big fan of it and I can definitely see why. It's a really well-made game. But as you said, it is super hard. And I'm generally not a fan of difficult games. I think particularly these days, there's enough work and stress and like focus um, that's required in the rest of my life that I prefer to play video games where I can pretty much just chill. CSGO is probably the exception simply because it's a game that I'm really familiar with, so for me personally it doesn't take that much effort. Yeah. Sure, I'm gonna play some with me if I'm... Oh yeah, because it's two-player, isn't it? Or there's an option for that at least. That's cool. Massively high damage for some reason. Oh my god, five of these fuckers. Okay, sure. Because why would this game attempt to be fair? Ow. Oh jeez, there's so, so many things on the screen. Okay. Alright. Um, I'm so tempted. Yeah, let's go to one more room and unlock this. this happen. Little baby. do the thing. I'm not sure that I've ever beaten him. Sweet! All because of you, Aiden. I give you full credit for me being slightly decent this run. <laughs>
Later, dude. Peace. Hmm. And you know, it's tan, so I think I'm gonna probably just end the stream there. Reconnect. There we go. So if I do... Later.